Trevor here, and today I illustrate for you from the SCP Foundation Vaults. Item number SCP-774. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. All supplies of SCP-774 are to be kept in sealed metal barrels designed for hazardous chemical waste. Subjects are to be maintained in hospital beds kept alive via procedure 17A. Description SCP-774 is a byproduct of When in contact with the skin, it permeates the body's tissues and selectively attacks bone, dissolving the bone mineral and leaving only the soft collagen. This can occur in minutes or even over the course of days, depending on the degree of exposure. The only bone that is not affected by the initial reaction is the skull. However, shortly after the other bones begin dissolving, the anomalous properties of SCP-774 manifest. Calcium, leached from the rest of the body, is deposited on the skull, creating grooves and ridges that grow from the interior and exterior surfaces of the skull, forming symmetrical patterns of increasing complexity that intrude into neighboring tissue, eventually erupting from the skin or growing to meet other bone tissue. These eventually fuse the bones of the skull, rendering the mandible immobile. The largest pattern observed so far is 2 meters across, induced by procedure 17A. See footnote 1. Intrusions in the sinus cavity create whistling sounds in the subject's breathing, which rapidly change pitch and tone, though each skull has a different set of tones. The effect is similar to birdsong. While subjects affected by SCP-774 are unable or unwilling to communicate, their heart rate and breathing becomes more regular when able to hear other late-stage subjects. See addendum 774-2. Subjects typically expire following the collapse of the rib cage or damage to the spinal cord due to the loss of the spine. However, artificial supports can be implanted as per procedure 17A, prolonging life. Subjects kept alive after the complete loss of non-cranial skeleton can be induced further growth by implanting new bone material. Subjects SCP-774-17 has been kept alive 12 years at the time of this writing. Trace amounts of SCP-774 are still found in Subject 17's bloodstream. See Addendum 774-3. Addendum 774-1. Dr. Mann was able to induce growth in specific directions through careful breaks and cuts into the bone tissue. However, after several weeks, the new growth was destroyed and the former pattern reasserted itself. Addendum 774-2. Analysis of the whistling shows distinct patterns, some of which have been mapped to specific external stimuli. Dr. Mann has requested permission to vivisect a 774 subject for the purpose of examining continued function of the linguistic centers of the brain. Addendum 774-3 Subject 774-24 was isolated from other test subjects. After several weeks in which its whistling grew more agitated, they started producing a viscous fluid from the tip of its protrusions, which provided to be further quantities of SCP-774. Two researchers working in the room were affected. Once they progressed to the whistling stage, the bones of 774-24 stopped producing fluid. Their patterns were identical to the subjects of 774-17 and 21 respectively, including the range of whistles. They were termed Subject 774-26 and 27, following Procedure 17-A. Dr. Mann has decided to keep them isolated for the time being. Addendum 774-4 Following a renovation of site, Subjects 774-24, 26, and 27 were placed into containment with the other subjects. Shortly after, the growths of Subjects 26 and 27 began to rapidly reshape, bone being subsumed and reformed into different patterns, which changed the pitch, tone, and patterns of their whistling. Subject 26 is now identical to the terminated Subject 25, while Subject 27 shows a new growth pattern entirely. Footnotes Number 1 Investigation into whether the effects of SCP-1808 instances involve a variation of this phenomenon is ongoing. That concludes the file for SCP-774. I hope you've enjoyed this illustration and narration. 
You can visit the description below for all the SCPs that I've covered related to SCP-774. If you have an SCP or a short story that you'd like to see narrated and illustrated, let me know in the comments below. Hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.